Autumn by John Clare. The thistle down's flying, though the winds are all still, on the green grass now lying, now mounting the hill. The spring from the fountain now boils like a pot, through stones past the counting it bubbles red hot. The ground parched and cracked is like over-baked bread. The greensward all racked is, bents dried up and dead. The fallow fields glitter like water indeed, and gossamers twitter, flung from weed unto weed. Hilltops like hot iron glitter bright in the sun, and the rivers we're eyeing burn to gold as they run. Burning hot is the ground, liquid gold is the air. Whoever looks round sees eternity there. I Wandered Lonely as a Cloud by William Wordsworth I wandered lonely as a cloud that floats on high o'er vales and hills when all at once I saw a crowd, a host of golden daffodils, beside the lake, beneath the trees, fluttering and dancing in the breeze. Continuous as the stars that shine and twinkle on the Milky Way, they stretched in never-ending line along the margin of the bay. Ten thousand saw I at a glance, tossing their heads in sprightly dance. The waves beside them danced, but they outdid the sparkling waves in glee. A poet could not but be gay in such a kind company. I gazed and gazed, but little thought what wealth the show to me had brought. For oft, when on my couch I lie, in vacant or in pensive mood, they flash upon that inward eye which is the bliss of solitude. And then my heart with pleasure fills, and dances with the daffodils. On the Grasshopper and Cricket The poetry of earth is never dead, When all the birds are faint with the hot sun, And hide in cooling trees, a voice will run. From hedge to hedge, about the new-mown mead, That is the grasshopper's, he takes the lead. In summer luxury he has never done, With his delights for when tired out with fun, He rests at ease beneath some pleasant weed. The poetry of earth is ceasing never, On a lone winter evening, When the frost has wrought a silence, From the stove there shrills, The cricket song, in warmth increasing ever, And seems to one in drowsiness half lost, The grasshoppers among some grassy hills. Useful signs. Bird. Your turn. Bird. Insect. Your go. Insect. Grass. Your turn. Grass. Science. And welcome to Mad Morgan Science Show. Today we're going to be doing magic maths. I hope you've got your number brains on because we're going to be finding out who Alan Turing is, how we make codes, and how we break them. It's time for Mad Morgan's five fun fast facts. Number one, Alan Turing was a British mathematician. Number two, he made great contributions to the fields of mathematics, computer science, and artificial intelligence. Number three, Turing built one of the world's first supercomputers and it broke codes. Number four, he worked for the government in World War II. And number five, Alan Turing even has an award named after him. Whew. It's time for the experiment. Today, we're going to be working out how to make codes and how to break them so that you can send secret messages to your friends. First, you need to write out the alphabet. Then, you need to give each letter a number. Then, when you write your message, use the number instead of the letter. So, if I wanted to write hello, I would write 
8, 5, 12, 12, 15. You could try even trickier codes, like putting different numbers next to different letters, but make sure each number only goes with one letter. You could even replace the numbers with something like pictures, other words or symbols. It's up to you! Or you could write one like this and give it to a friend. Here you go! Oh, what's this? A secret code. Oh, cool! So that's... Uh, yep. Yeah. And then... Mm-hmm. Hang on a minute. I don't smell! <laughs> well, that was cool. But how do people use it? Well, codes are a good way to keep messages hidden from other people. Codes have so many uses in modern day technology, like phones, computers, and gaming systems. They all use encrypted data. Encrypted means to convert data into a code. And there are people whose job it is to write the codes that make all these things work. The idea of a computer as we know it is in part thanks to Alan Turing. Turing had an idea of an imaginary machine that could solve any problem. One machine that could solve any problem is the idea behind our computers, phones, tablets and playstations. Wow! Thanks Alan! See you next week! Bye! Useful signs. Computer. Your turn. Computer. Puzzle. Your go. Puzzle. Secret. Your turn. Secret. <laughs> Warning! Dad joke alert! I'm reading a book about anti-gravity at the moment. It's impossible to put down. <laughs> Culture! We should all look up to men who fight for people's rights. Two men who fought for their rights were Marsha P. Johnson and Sylvia Rivera. They played an important part in the Stonewall Riots. But what were the Stonewall Riots? Let's ask my friend David. Hello everybody, my name's David and I'm here today to talk to you about the Stonewall Inn. Now, you're probably wondering, what is the Stonewall Inn? Well, it was a place for people who were... LGBTQIA plus to go, where they could feel comfortable and could be themselves. Because at this time in history, about 50 years ago, people who were LGBTQIA were considered not equal and were treated unfairly. It's places like the Stonewall Inn where members of the LGBTQIA plus community can come and celebrate who they are. But on the 28th of June, 1969, the police decided to raid the inn and arrest everybody inside. But the people who were inside the inn decided to stand together and decided to protest, which means they refused to be arrested for being who they are. This took strength and courage, but they did well and fought for what they believed right and that is a very important lesson from today's video that you should always stand up for what you believe is right and if you find something confusing or you don't fully understand then you should always feel happy to ask a question as long as you can do it politely on that night at the Stonewall Inn after everyone inside stood together the police finally decided to back down and allow the people of the LGBTQIA plus community to stay in the Stonewall Inn and continue celebrating. Now it wasn't until after the event at the Stonewall Inn when the rights and freedom of the LGBTQIA plus community really started to happen. Nowadays you may notice these all across the world and you may know them as Gay Pride and these are celebrations held worldwide for people to remember the fight and struggle that they had to go through to be loved and accepted. I think that's something to be celebrated every day. Don't you? Thank you so much for listening, everybody. Have a good day. Cooking.
Hello and welcome to Super Severin's cooking show. Oh, today I'm on a tour around the world, so I'm a bit busy to do some cooking. So I've asked Sloth to take my place. Oh, I'm in Antarctica and it's very cold. Sloth's going to be making a sandwich for us today. Is that okay, Sloth? Yep, leave it with me, boss. Good luck. Did you know that the sandwich was invented by the Earl of Sandwich in 1762? Wow! Today we're going to be making cheese sandwiches. But I thought that sounded a little bit boring, so I thought we could spice it up a little. So for today's sandwich, you will need some plain flour, some fishy feast, because I thought if the goldfish likes it, it's probably good, some chilli flakes, some eggs, some cheese of course, some Nutella, we don't want it being too dry, some table salt, some bread, and also some guinea pig food for extra crunch. As you can see, I'm in a rainforest now, but I should be home just in time for tea. Oh, it's much warmer here. Sloth, how's it coming along? Pretty good. First, get your pieces of bread and put some cheese on. Next, spread your Nutella like this. Sprinkle some chilli flakes. Ooh, spicy. Sprinkle your fishy food. Just a pinch of flour. Little bit of salt. Some delicious guinea pig food. One raw egg. It looks a bit dry, so I'm just going to add some ketchup. And some mustard. Delicious. I've just added a sprinkling more flour because I didn't think it looked quite good enough. I've just popped to the desert, but I should be home in about ten minutes. See you soon, Sloth. Uh oh, oh, I better get this tidied up quick. I don't think she's going to be happy. Then just pop your sandwich onto a plate to enjoy. Sloth, is that the cheese sandwich you were meant to make for me? Yes. Um, well, it looks delicious, but I think I might have to make my own. Suit yourself more for me. Mmm. Warning, for sloth consumption only, please do not try at home. Useful signs. Mess. Your turn. Mess. Sandwich. Your go. Sandwich. World. Your turn. World. Warning. Dad joke alert! I've just decided to sell my vacuum cleaner. Well, it was just gathering dust. <laughs> Get moving! Hi everybody, welcome to Get Moving. Today we're going to be talking about male athletes that can inspire us to be our best in sports. First, let's talk about Nathan McQueen. Nathan McQueen is a Scottish athlete. An accident as a teenager left him paralysed. However, having competed in archery before his accident, he didn't want to let that stop him from pursuing his dream. He started competing internationally in 2016. To be good at archery, you need to have really good aim. So let's have a go at improving our aim. So we're going to play something called coin toss. All you need is a bucket and some pennies. What you're going to do is try and throw your coins into the bucket, like this. And if you get it in, take a step back and try again. And then keep taking steps back until you miss. Oops! Let's talk about Mo Farah. Mo is a British middle and long distance runner who holds the European records in both the 5,000 and the 10,000 metres. Farah was born in Somalia and he moved to England when he was eight years old. In the 2012 Olympics, he won two gold medals and his signature winning move is the Mobot. To be good at long distance running, like Mo, you need to have good stamina. Doing lots of exercises to get your heart rate up can help increase your stamina. Let's do some cardio to get our hearts pumping. Ready? Star jumps! And high knees. And now sprint. Keep it going. And quicker. 
fast as you can and jump and jump and star jumps can you feel your heart beating and run and high knees and rest good job everybody Lastly, let's talk about Lewis Antoine Smith. He's a retired British artistic gymnast and he received medals in the 2008, 2012 and the 2016 Olympics. To be good at gymnastics, you need to have really good balance. Let's work together to improve our balance. To improve your balance, try standing on one leg. You can hold your arms out to help you. Great job. Or you could try a handstand, a headstand, or a shoulder stand like this, or something like this. Useful signs. Archery. Your go. Archery. Wheelchair. Your turn. Wheelchair. Balance. Your go. Balance. Story time. show again with another mini myth with Charlie. This time we're looking at one of Plutarch's histories to find the story. The Tale of Timoclea. Alexander the Great was unstoppable. His armies conquered the whole known world. But he was a reasonable man, as you will see once this story has unfurled. His soldiers took over the city of Thebes. So many honourable men had died, and Alexander remained in the city to oversee as their forces allied. One such honourable death was the brother of Timoclea, left alone in their parents' huge estate, threatened by outsiders. She had an idea. A strong soldier, rude and awful to her, had moved in and demanded all her wealth, but Timoclea was far more clever and relied on her every bit of stealth. She told him there were treasures in the well, hidden when she heard the soldiers approach. She would help him fetch it if he promised to leave and give her no reproach. He swore his word, but planned to betray her, and followed her happily to the well. He climbed down a rope into the darkness, and Timoclea cut the rope. He fell. He dropped to the bottom, finding nothing, just darkness in the chilly well water. Enraged, he began to climb the sides, promising that she would not escape his slaughter. Timoclea thought fast and fetched large rocks that she and her maids could lift together pelting them down into the dark well until the cruel soldier was no more bother. She knew her crimes could not stay unknown, and she travelled into town the next day, boldly stating her name and story to the king, Alexander, come what may. Impressed by her bravery, he stood and absolved her of all her crimes before the court, checking up on each of his soldiers, and offered her family his support. The end. <laughs>